Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to lecture 47. We are discussing recent advances in turbofan engines. So in last lecture we were discussing about Rolls Royce ongoing project on ultra fan and advanced concept. We also have discussed about the NASA project about say high tech and then we were discussing about the propulsive fuselage concept and turbo electric propulsion system. So if we look at all what we have discussed up till now that is what is mainly been focusing on commercial engines. We will say what about say military engines because we know these military engines are also coming under category of turbofan engines. So let us try to understand the military aero engines. So before starting let us look at this plot. That is what is giving the different kind of information. It says on x axis we are having say turbine entry temperature or inlet temperature and thrust to weight ratio. When we are talking about say application for military as well as for commercial aircraft our expectation is more towards say thrust to weight ratio. But here this thrust to weight ratio is different compared to our commercial engines. So let us try to look at, so this is the third generation engine, we can say it is R29B300 where the turbine entry temperature that is what is in the range of 1400 Kelvin and roughly thrust to weight ratio is around 6 to 7. And if we look at carefully the bypass ratio for such third generation engine it was around 0.7 to 1, fan pressure ratio is approximately 2.5, overall pressure ratio is slightly on the lower side say 13 to 20, turbine blade material those days it was equi x propelling nozzle mainly it is a conversion nozzle and control systems they are hydraulic and pneumatic system. So this is what is called third generation aero engine. So let us move towards the next. So here this is Eurojet 200 that is defined as a fourth generation aircraft where the bypass ratio that is what has reduced from say 0 0.7 to say 0 0.2 to 0 0.6. Fan pressure ratio also is raised, overall pressure ratio also increased. At the same time the turbine entry temperature if we look at it is on the higher side. And that is the reason why turbine blade material also is changed. The nozzle is more conversion diversion and at the same time control system that also has changed to full authority digital engine control. So we can say over the year the advancements that is what is going on in say military engines and that is what we are defining in terms of generation of aircraft. Here the thrust to weight ratio is in the range of say maybe 8 or 8.5. Next we have it is our fifth generation aircraft say recent engine F-135 or say we have our fighter 35 that is what is coming under this category where the bypass ratio further it has been reduced to say 0 0.3 to 0 0.5. Fan pressure ratio is moving on the higher side, it is more than 4.5, overall pressure ratio is also higher, at the same time the material is single crystal blade and this propelling nozzle they are with the truck thrust vectoring and integrated engine and flight control that is what is a control system. Basically what all we are discussing that is what is deciding the generation of the aircraft. Here in this case thrust to weight ratio is 
say roughly in the range of say 10. Say next when we are moving it is called 6th generation aircraft or we can say it is a future engine where the turbine entry temperature will be more than 2200 and expected thrust to weight ratio it is in the range of 14 to 15. And here we can say the bypass ratio it is not fixed it says it is variable fan pressure ratio is on higher side in the range of 5.5 overall pressure ratio is 35 to 45. The turbine blade material with the advancement of technology it is ceramic, ceramic matrix composite and here this propelling nozzle if will be say FTV and control system it is intelligent control system. So, let us look at how we need to understand this military engine. So, this is a representing the generation from third generation, fourth generation say 4.5 generation also is coming in between then we have fifth generation and the future engine that is what is thrust generation. So, it says over the generation that is what is turbine entry temperature is going higher and higher at the same time thrust to weight ratio expectation also is going higher. So, let us look at one of that engine this is the fifth generation engine that is F135 which was designed and developed by Pratt and Whitney. Here in this case if we look at they have two configuration there are number of configuration which are being explored by Pratt and Whitney say it is conventional say takeoff and landing. Here in this case if we look at we are having fan that will be followed by bypass duct and here we are having say HP compressor, HP turbine and we are having say LP turbine that will be followed by the afterburner and here in this case we have special kind of say conversion diversion nozzle. This conversion diversion nozzle that is what is being used for the specific purpose here that is what we say in terms of vertical takeoff. So, let us try to understand the other configuration. This other configuration it is say configuration of PW600 where we have a fan combination that is what is being placed in the front. So, if we look at here this is representing the overall picture where as we have discussed this nozzle it is with three bearing swell duct. So, that is what will be rotating as per the requirement and the exit area can be vary as per the requirement in terms of say paddles. So, those who have not attended the second week classes just go through that where we have discussed about the construction of nozzle and there also we have explored some of the possibility in terms of variable area nozzle. Here there is a shaft which is been connected with this fan configuration. This fan it is counter rotating configuration that is what will be helping in terms of generation of the lift. So, we can say by swelling this nozzle downside that is what will be giving the vertical takeoff and in order to counter or in order to balance there is a lift fan which has been provided in the front. And this fan it has been designed by Rolls Royce. Here there is a special arrangement of say roll nozzles which will be taking care when we are having say vertical takeoff it will be balancing the rolling movement on both the side. So, if you want to look at how exactly it is working this is the side YouTube video is available you can go through in order to understand how this engine is working and as I told this is what has been fitted with say F-35 engine say aircraft. So, let us look at what all are the advantages in terms of F-135. Here this technology is a proprietary technology. We can say it is a confidential project or at the same time we can say it is coming under say export control. So, limo limited information that is what is available for this engine. So, what all is available in open literature based on that we have tried to put the advantages of F-135. There is nothing to discuss in terms of commercial aspect. Let me clarify here. So, here in this case it says it is being designed with the stealth features and that is what will be saving or it is giving the uh, say 
detection or say it is reducing the IR signature and that is what will be used in order to have the detection risk and that is the reason why it is of more popularity. Second that is what is in terms of versatility as we have discussed this engine it is been made for different applications so F35 they are having different variants. So it need to perform various missions which are maybe air to air combat or air to ground strike, intelligent gathering or reconnaissance purpose. So all these purposes, so it is a versatile kind of engine. At the same time it is having high thrust to weight ratio as we have discussed and that is what is giving the agility, acceleration and overall performance under different flight regimes including supersonic speed also. And fuel efficiency it is one of the major attraction that is the reason why it is extended with the range and the endurance limit for the mission. Here since it is working under very high temperature configuration that is what is required a special kind of say attention in terms of cooling that is what is been taken care of in F-135 engine. Say since the operating temperature is higher overall pressure ratio is higher and there we are looking for the special kind of material we are looking for say lightweight composite or heat resistance alloy that is what is being used in order to reduce the weight and to improve the overall performance of the engine. And this aircraft engine can attain very say supersonic speed very quickly and that is what is giving the attention in terms of say you know achieving the supersonic speed at very short duration. So these all are the listed advantages in their web page and in open discussion. So let us try to understand what all are the challenges for this engine. So very first challenge we can say since it is a new kind of engine and it is high performance military engine that means it is very expensive in terms of design, development, production and maintain. And that is the reason why when we say the countries those who are having this F-35 aircraft they are the richer countries. So you can understand what we mean by the cost of this aircraft. Next it is in terms of weight we can say the overall weight it is slightly on the higher side because of the complexity in terms of design and use of material. The maintenance since this technology it is of different kind and that is the reason why it is subjected to higher maintenance cost and logistic challenges also. At the same time it need to be used at different you know environmental aspects also. So in terms of development time since this is what is a cutting edge technology it took lot of time in terms of research, development, testing, certification and all those that is what is required the time and the delay in supply of this that is what will be impact on say the cells of these engines. At the same time the supply change that also is important since this is coming under say export control and that is the reason why it is very challenging to have this kind of engine. Same way operational consideration when we are using that that is what is required a special kind of operations, so special kind of operating characteristics are required where it is more challenging to use this kind of engine. And since it is operating as high temperature that required say very good thermal management system because it will subject it to have very high heating and that is what will be deteriorating the performance of the engine or maybe in terms of failure of the engine. So we can say this is a new engine we, what we have discussed in terms of fifth generation aircraft and many countries they have opted with this aircraft and that is what is under sell, under development for the different mission requirements. Let us try to understand this different criteria here. So what all we have discussed we have say two spool turbojet engine we have suppose say two spool turbofan engine. Let us try to look at what all we have discussed up till now 
in terms of our understanding. What we mean for say turbojet engine we are having say higher exit velocity and that is what will lead to increase the thrust developed by this engine. So, if we look at turbojet engines they are having very high thrust generation capacity with say higher exit velocity. And if we look at this is simple in terms of design and they are more efficient we have discussed in terms of achieving the supersonic speed. So, these are the benefits of two spool turbojet engine what all we have explored during our week 3 and week 4. Let us look at in terms of what all are the challenges say what we say we are looking for the efficiency we have constraints in terms of say temperature and that is where the challenge is coming in terms of improvement of efficiency, specific fuel consumption, IR signature as well as noise. So, these are the challenges for the say turbojet engine and that is the reason why people they move towards say turbofan engine kind of configuration. So, let us look at what are the benefits for say two spool turbofan engine they are with the improvement in terms of efficiency, lower specific fuel consumption, we have say jet noise separation at the same time it is less susceptible for say infrared detection. So, what all are the limitation we were discussing for turbo jet engine that is what will be overcome by incorporating this turbo fan engine. So, let us try to understand can we think of say engine where we will be having the benefit of both turbo jet as well as turbo fan. So, that is what will be fulfilling our requirement for say subsonic requirement and supersonic requirement. Suppose if you are discussing for the military application we can say supersonic mission that is what is a major requirement for the military engine. At the same time when we say say subsonic operation that is what we say the benefit in terms of say specific fuel consumption. So, let us target the advantage of these two engines. What are the advantages we need to take up with? It says for turbojet engine that is what is giving higher specific thrust. At the same time this turbofan engine that is what is giving the benefit in terms of lower specific fuel consumption and lower emission. So, we are now moving towards the development of new kind of engine where we will try to enhance the performance of the engine. The same engine that can work under two different categories as of, as of our requirement it will be work as a turbojet engine as and when required I can use that as a turbofan engine. Oh, is it possible? Let us try to look at because you know what are our requirement as we say we are looking for the benefits of both. So, what we have understood it says when my engine it is working under off design condition. So, when we say off design condition we will be having say our cycle parameter that is what will be changing. Sometimes we need to have compromise in terms of power as well as poor component performance. So, you know as and when we are looking for a special kind of configuration where we want to remove the limitations in terms of poor performance. Is it possible with? So, let us try to look at if we are looking for the special kind of configuration we want to operate our aircraft both in subsonic and supersonic flight condition. So, we will be moving with the active control of the cycle parameters which can be achieved as per the requirement. So, we will say what is this? Okay. Is it possible to control the cycle parameters? The answer is yes. That is what is called variable cycle engine. It is nothing but it can optimize the cycle parameter in order to meet a special overall performance that is what is required for the specific flight conditions. Now, remember one thing the cycle what we mean in our thermodynamics is the 
completion or maybe we can say from one end it will be starting and ending at the other point. Here the variable cycle it is in terms of operation. So do not get confused with the terminology of cycle. So let us try to look at what is the meaning of that. So here if we look at this is a representing say the engine and speciality of this engine here you can say it is written say VB1, it is VB2, here somewhere it is written VB3. What is VB1? It is say if we look at it says variable say injector or say it is a selector valve that is what is being placed at the end of the fan. So, here if you look at here this is a kind of switch or we can say we can open and close this wall. We can say this as a wall. Okay. Same way here in this case it says VB2 it is a wall that is what is used to open and root say close as per the requirement that is what is being placed here it is called say core driven fan. So, this if we look at it says a two spool kind of configuration where the LP turbine which is used to rotate this fan and this HP turbine that is what is used to rotate HP compressor as well as this fan. Okay. We are having VB3 that is what is say variable area bypass nozzle that is what is used for the mixing of our bypass duct and the core here in some region. And here if we look at it says we have afterburner and at the exit we are having variable area nozzle. So, it is a different kind of configuration we can say. So, it says it is it is a mixed kind of configuration which can be used for all our flight conditions, subsonic condition, transonic condition or the supersonic condition and you know here in this case our major requirement is in terms of say fuel economy both during supersonic and subsonic cruise as well as noise. Now the question will come why are we thinking about the fuel economy? Up till now what all I was discussing we used to say for military engine we are not bothering of fuel economy. But now the time has come. Suppose say if you want to have the continuous flight from one location to other location without any stoppage where we will not be requesting someone to have landing and then refueling and all those aspects. Under that configuration we are looking for the fuel economy during the cruise operation. So basically we want to increase our range, we want to increase our endurance. At the same time we also need to focus on the noise. Okay. So let us try to look at this is representing the working of this variable cycle engine. Here in this case if we look at carefully it says we are having VB1 that is close, VB2 also is close. So here if we look at carefully there is no bypass that is what is happening from this fan, there is no bypass that is what is happening from this other fan. So we can say this engine is working similar to our turbojet engine. Okay. So the thing is when we will be using our turbojet engine, what is the requirement? When our thrust requirement is higher under that configuration or say when we are looking for supersonic speed, we will be running our engine as turbojet engine. Let us look at here. Suppose if we consider my VB1 it is open and VB2 that is what is close. So under this configuration this engine is working like turbofan engine. Yes. Just look at here this is my core engine and here I am having bypass duct. Similarly here if we configure in this case suppose if we consider say we are having VB1 and VB2 they both are open. Okay. So both the valves are in open configuration where we will be thinking in terms of operation as conventional engine. Okay. 
Suppose if we consider here in this case, I will be closing my VB1 and I will be opening my VB2. So that is what is acting like a bypass kind of configuration. Now this all we are discussing, it seems easy to discuss at this moment, but let us try to understand what is the meaning of that. What basically are we looking for is we want to have this engine that is what will be working under different configuration as per my requirement. That means in terms of turbo jet engine as well as turbo fan engine. Okay. Now let us see what all are my requirement. I say take off where the major focus it is in terms of thrust requirement and if you look at we are looking for our exit velocity to be in the range of 400 meter per second. We are focusing on noise level. So we want to suppress the noise at the same time what is our requirement? We say we are looking for say higher amount of thrust. Okay. Suppose if we consider we are looking for say subsonic operation. So most of the time we are operating our aircraft under subsonic condition or we are running our engine under subsonic cruise condition where we will be considering more in terms of fuel economy or we want to reduce the fuel consumption. So under that configuration the engine size that is what is influenced the nasal drag. So we need to have a kind of configuration where we will be focusing in terms of fuel economy. So we can say our turbo fan engine that is what is acting fine under this configuration. Similarly as per our requirement for the flight envelope we are looking for supersonic cruise. Under that configuration my engine say size that is what will subjected to shock wave and that will be increasing say drag. So now we need to move with say design of the engine that is what will be fulfilling all these requirements. Okay. So, so what all are the possibilities we have say variable cycle engine at the same time we need to move with say variable geometry kind of configuration. What are the criteria? we say we are having say supersonic point, subsonic point say we have takeoff configuration. So we need to go with say design optimization for takeoff configuration, supersonic and subsonic configuration. We need to go with the component matching and all those aspects. Now let us come to the point here. Let us look at this engine carefully. Suppose if I say I am operating this engine as turbojet engine. So we can say as per the requirement, the mass flow rate that is what is flowing through my compressor as well as combustion chamber and our turbine. Okay. Now suppose say if I will be putting one of the valve open under that configuration the mass flow rate which is going into core engine that is what will be reducing. So that will not be generating the sufficient amount of power in order to rotate the compressor. So in order to have same power to be generated to run this compressor, we need to increase the velocity at say the entry of the turbine. It is called variable area nozzle vein. So by changing the area between say nozzle vein, we are able to increase the velocity of the exhaust gas and that is what will be striking on the rotor of the turbine. And which will be generating same power as per the requirement. So it is very complex in terms of understanding. So maybe when you go ahead, when you go or read in detail, you will try to realize the complexity of this kind of configuration. So it is not only that we will be putting the wall here and that is what will serve the purpose. We will be having say variable kind of veins we need to incorporate both for compressor as well as for the turbine. Okay. So let us move towards the configuration. This is the configuration that is what has been proposed by Pratt and Whitney. So here in this case if you look at we are having the bypass stream here and this is our core engine. So during takeoff operation if we look at carefully what will happen? We will be having say 
this noise what is being generated by this jet that need to be suppressed. So, under that configuration we will be having the opening of this particular stream. So, that is what will be giving the inverted kind of velocity profile. Okay. So, under takeoff condition we will be taking care of noise suppression. Suppose say we are looking for supersonic cruise where my thrust requirement is higher. So, in bypass duct if we look at there is a kind of combustor it has been placed in this. This combustor that is what will be burning the fuel and that is what will be generating the flat velocity profile. So, it is a variable stream kind of configuration where we will be achieving say you no know, supersonic cruise. So, burner that is what is on even in bypass stream. Say when we are operating under supersonic cruise condition there we will be putting our burner in off condition. So, measure of the, of the thrust that is what will be generated by our turbojet engine. So, this kind of configuration there are number of configuration which are been explored by number of companies, number of researchers from different universities. So, the configuration what all we are discussing in terms of variable cycle engine it is not a new concept. People they started exploring this kind of configuration during 70s. So, you can say it is almost 50 years back people they have explored the possibilities. Now, with the advancement of technology, with the advancement of computational facility, experimental facility, people they realize that this also can be explored as a future engine requirement. Okay. So, this is a configuration which was been explored by G what all we have discussed in terms of VB1, VB2 and VB3. This configuration it is for XF, YF, F120 variable cycle engine. So, GE also is working on the development of this variable cycle engine. So, let us look at what all are the ongoing projects in this configuration. So, the project it is called say ADVENT. It is adaptive versatile engine technology. There is a project which is called versatile affordable advanced turbine engine under that category different ongoing research we have. It says the requirement it is to improve the specific fuel consumption by 30 percent and in order to meet this requirement there is a requirement for say overall compression system variable cycle technology, advanced high temperature material uh, technology that is what is required to meet say power as well as say the energy, thermal energy. So, these are the engines which are under development in US, even these engines are under development by different countries. When we are discussing about the military engine, it is a proprietary nature kind of work, so no details that is what is available in, in straight way. But let us try to understand what understanding we have. So, here in this case one of the requirement as we have discussed it is IR signature. This IR signatures will be mainly from your turbine section and the exhaust of the nozzle. So, innovative kind of nozzles they are being designed so that that will be suppressing the IR signature. At the same time here a specialized stream it is been provided that is what is acting like a cooling barrier and that is suppressing the nozzle say IR signature. Let us look at this is a variable cycle engine. So, more detail you can go through the web page by G that is adaptive versatile engine technology. 